I'm Stefan Meyer. I teach the core strategy class and an elective on the future of work here at CBS. I'm Todd Jick, and I teach organizational change and a course called Bridging the American Divides, 18 years at CBS. A couple of months ago, when all this AI hype became like really to the forefront, Todd and I met in the hallway and started talking about AI and both figured out that what really interests us is the human side of the human-machine interaction. We thought about how can we create this human-centric future of work? How can we really deeply think about change management tools and human motivation and thinking about how to implement AI in a way that really lets it to succeed in an organizational context? I think there is, a, a, in particular, like three ways in how AI and the integration and human-machine interaction affects leaders and the integration, and it has mainly to do with implementation. Uh, the first is humans are generally very anxious about change, uh, and obviously in AI, where the whole discussion is about replacing humans, they're even more anxious about that AI comes for their job and what is actually left them for them to do. Second, what leaders need to do is make sure that their workforce is ready and has the right skills for their new ways of working. And third, I think it's for leaders to figure out how to, AI, how to implement AI in an organization in order to create more value, not just thinking about how we can do stuff more cost effect effectively. How to actually use AI in order to make the organization do work better and not just more efficiently. I think in the end, this is not only a technical, but actually a very human change management uh, process. And so I'm very happy to you know, have the expert here at Columbia Business <laughs> School about change management, uh, Professor Todd Chick, who teaches change management for years, to think about how, what are the tools that we have, or he has in his arsenal, that we can now adapt uh, and use for the AI transformation. Obviously, there has to be a value in what the AI will produce, some deliverable that is valuable. Our concern, however, is that there's been an over-indexing on the technology and the value question, and an under-indexing on how this gets accepted or implemented. And I used to say very simply this, a good idea badly implemented doesn't go anywhere. Obviously, a bad idea beautifully implemented is not a good thing either. But what we're trying to do is emphasize the importance of implementation. We have a checkered history about organizations taking in changes. In fact, most studies, PhD students, researchers, management consultants show about a 75% failure rate of introducing organizational changes. This is a broad scale organizational change when it comes to AI. And all of us need to take, take an important uh, perspective on the fact that this is going to take work to get into the 25% category. Now, why do we have that kind of ra ratio of success to failure? Because we have been unsuccessful in dealing with two main reasons why people resist change. One, they're unwilling to change. Two, they're unable to change. Those are two very different reasons. They're unwilling to change for many reasons because they fear for their jobs, because they fear their loss of status or identity, because they haven't been included in the process, and because they haven't been informed well enough and communicated to. Ironically, when you talk to leaders about the actual occasions in which they explain the benefits of change, and we've done research on this, only 61% of leaders are reputed to actually explain the benefits of change, the simplest uh, minimum. Uh, only about 45% speak to employees on a one-on-one -on -one basis. As in, but in fact, 75% think simple enthusiasm will win the day, trying to be enthusiastic. Well, employees want more than that. So their unwillingness to take in something like AI comes from reasons that have to do with sort of their motivation, the incentives, the degree of inclusion, and their actual ability to be able to use the tool. We need to find ways in which there's more transparency. We need to find ways to, f to involve employees in a much more uh, fundamental way, earlier and often. And we need to find ways to deal with one of the sensitive issues, and I think we should talk about this, which is people's fears of losing their jobs. 
There are many, many factors that make people unwilling. This is again traditional change management and that methodology and that science ought to be part of this exercise. And the final point again about their being unable is not a minimal point. When people are asked to do something entirely different and Stefan himself is very involved with thinking about the future of work and re reset their entire job situation, we need to think about how you upskill people and how you provide transitions and how you provide pilots and experimentation and ways in which you are retraining adults to do things they were not equipped to do previously. So the work of change management is absolutely essential to being able to ensure that AI gets the benefits that we all hope it will provide. In order for employees to be comfortable and to in fact accept change, there are five techniques that I think are critical to mitigating the problems of people being either unwilling or unable. On the unwilling side, we need to do the following. One, inform. Be sure people are communicated to. Two, incent. Be sure there are some benefits associated with it. Three, and I want to be sure this is very well understood, include, involve as early and as often as possible the employees in the uh, adoption, in the development and the adoption of AI. Fourth, they need to be inspired to the possibility of this being a very exciting future. And finally, when it comes to their inability, they need to be instructed. I could have said trained, but it didn't begin with I, so five words beginning with I. That's what I would suggest in order to be able to ensure that this gets implemented effectively. I think it's very important for leaders to assure their employees that they, what they actually want to do is augment and not replace their, uh, their employees. Now this is not so easy to do, but one way of doing that uh, concretely is to move away from jobs and thinking about tasks. Because what AI really does, it does certain tasks really well in order to free up capacity for the humans to concentrate on something else. So when you think about wealth management uh, and Morgan Stanley as a concrete example, uh, they figured out you know, there are certain tasks that the financial advisor does uh, that, the human, uh, that the machine can actually do better. Uh, that allows the financial advisor to spend less time on those activities and more time of those that are actually value enhancing, which turns out to be talking to clients, having meetings, figuring out what is really the human need of their clients is very, very value enhancing. But before AI came to the picture, they were not able to spend as much time uh, on it. I think we're over-indexed a little bit too much on technology and not as much on the human side of it. I mean, I'm arguing really strongly that we need to understand kind of the oldest processor in the world, which is the human brain, and figure out, you know, what actually motivates people at work and how can we use technology to enhance that, those motivators and not destroy it. Think about one of the basic motivators, which is autonomy or trust. Uh, you can obviously use technology in the AI in particular to control your employees much better. Instead, we should think about how can we use technology and AI in particular to empower our employees, to actually make autonomy and empowerment more successful. That mainly works when people have feedback, information that they can actually do better in their job and make the right decisions. In my book, I talk about four basic motivators uh, that are important for engagement that for humans uh, at work. The first one is purpose and meaning. The second one is autonomy and the flip side is trust. The third one is competence or the right skills. And the fourth one is relatedness or what I call like working together works. Now you can think about those four motivators and how AI can enhance those in, and not destroy them. And if you implement it with those humans in mind, I think you're creating a very effectively human-centric future of work.